Hello, dear viewer. <laughs> hmm. Been a while, hasn't it? Well, as all five of you probably know, despite using tried and tested surefire methods of becoming a YouTube celebrity, ja 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 j wow Today's wado is Baka Gaiji. Now Baka Gaiji means stupid foreigner in Japanese. Um, yeah, as in the stupid foreigners that think they'll learn Japanese from watching me show off my goods on camera. And, uh, you know, this shit isn't working. Salud. No. Oh. I am still not one. Well, I'm bored, and judging by the fact that you're here, you're bored too, so... Let's go ahead and look online for another reviewer. After all, my life will not be complete until I catch them all. Well, that's enough of me. Transition! Alright, Internet. Help me out here. Um, it's been a while since I checked out reviews, but you know what? I've never done a review on an arcade reviewer, so... If those even exist. Arcade... Arcade... Reviews? You know, I guess I, I want something arcadish or arcadic. Um, let's look for something arcadic. Arcadic. Um, okay, let's uh, let's check arcadic out. Arcadic game reviews. Uh, okay. So here it is, Arcadic Game Reviews. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to show you his motto, bringing back the games that should have stayed hidden. This is an ominous sign. Right away, this tells me he's going to do the same classic, oh my god, every game sucks routine that a lot of us have grown tired of after six years of AVGN clones. Hell, his face even reminds me of someone I know. Just kind of close his eyes a bit, lower his brow a little bit, and give him an emo Hitler comb over, and voila. <sighs> Another thing that's hard to miss is the fact that he has the Donate logo right in plain view for you right there. Ooh, let's see the prizes. Five bucks gets you a thank you video, one he ostensibly pre-recorded for all such donations. Ten bucks gets you an autographed copy of the script or a sketch from an episode. Mm. What a treat. 25 bucks gets you your name in the credits for 12 episodes. He's done two since January. It's almost certain this successful show will go an entire 12 episodes, though. All the people watching my video right now will get to see your name in his videos from now on. <laughs> Yay. Oh, but 50 bucks. 50 bucks gets you an autographed machine part. Ooh, always wanted an autograph machine part that I could show to people and have them be impressed at how many famous people I know. Okay, so his motives and methods appear to be a little transparent. Like, as transparent as IGN's love for Mass Effect 3. But is all as it seems? Well, let's watch one of his two episodes. Okay, so he's new to the reviewing scene. Let's not waste any more time. Let's watch episode one and see if he's up to snuff. He fancies himself as a god of thunder. I can't wait. Excite! Action! Thrill! Excite! Fight! Shabr- Shabroom? What is Shabroom? Is that like a shitty broom? Wow! Your very first quip! Your very first chance to impress the audience and you go full bores on us? Somebody call 911, because we were <coughs> flying Pikachu. I said Rob. I said make a Rob. Try again. Somebody call 911, because we were Princess Erica from Fire Emblem. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Let's keep going. What you just saw was a game called Ground Attract Mode. 
What a track mode is is kind of like an arcade's equivalent to a movie trailer. It's kind of telling the kids, play me instead of this game. With words like excite and thrill, who wouldn't want to play Growl? Now what you might not know is that this game was created by Taito. Taito was responsible for one of the best and well-known games ever, Space Invaders. That's right, Space Invaders. Then in 1990 they created Growl. Oh yeah! In 1978 Taito made Space Invaders. Sure, THE Space Invaders. And as this guy points out, of course, it wouldn't be until 1990 that we would ever hear from Taito again until they made their smash hit growl. You know, that game that put Taito back on the map. Of course, in between those two games, Taito may have accidentally made Galaxy Wars, Lunar Rescue, Space Invaders 2, Crazy Balloon, Quick, Space Dungeon, Frontline, Elevator Action, Golgo 13, Gyrodyne, The Legend of Cage, Tiger Heli, Time Gal, Arkanoid, Bubble Bobble, Darius, Renegade, Operation Wolf, Rastan, Full Throttle, Twin Cobra, Final Blow, The Ninja Warrior, Superman, Darius 2, Rambo 3, Super Bubble Bobble, and Violence Fight. You know, those games that didn't bear mentioning at all. One of the downfalls in they have a lot, is that there were four characters to select, but only two controls to use. What an arcade owner could have done is purchase another growl cabinet and link them together with a cable. Huh, sounds like an awesome idea. You might ask yourself, what arcade owner would do that? An arcade owner that recognizes this problem and wants to satisfy his customers? And the second question is, what four people would want to play this game at the same time? Well, I'm really interested in playing it. How about you, wife? Sure, why not? Um, the problem is we're going to need two more people. Okay, uh, hey, Monty, do you want to play with us? Well, I would love to play it with three other people at the same time. Sweet! That makes three players. We need one more. Um, some shy guy, you want to join us? Well, I love beat-em-ups. I'm looking at this and I would love to play it with you guys. Excellent! We got four players. Let's go! On with the review. Well, I'm gonna play it for you right now, and I'm not looking forward to it. <sighs> if you're not looking forward to it, why are you doing this? Am I the only one who's sick of this trope? The, oh, 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 this game sucks, and you, the viewer, are totally forcing me to play this game that I hate for your amusement. <laughs> Why don't you just make a two girls, one cup reaction video? It would be a more original concept. Hey, come on. Even from the beginning of the game, you're taunted. It's kind of telling you, come on, waste six dollars and twenty minutes of your life. We'll have a grand old time. Yeah, right. I'd rather buy a Dino Rider at this time period of my life. Stupid $50 T-Rex asshole. What was the relevance there? Are you really that eager to emulate Boars' success that you resort to shoehorning in 80s references for no reason whatsoever? Also, if you're good enough, you're not gonna spend six bucks on this game. Not that you ever had to worry about that problem, since you're actually running it through a main cabinet rather than the real thing. You didn't have to spend one single quarter reviewing this game. Here's a clip from your second review. See something? Same machine! But now it's playing Double Dragon 3! After the game is done begging you for money... Wait, 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 god damn it, you make me comment so soon again. Begging for money? Really? Let's see what your donations are all about, good sir. All donations are put towards purchasing PCB boards to keep the series alive? Am I to understand you're going to use maimed versions of games you claim to hate in order to make your show while you buy PCBs of games you love with whatever money you rake in? Or worse, just pocket the money knowing you can get virtually anything on maim anyway? Begging for money? Please! You get to select one of four characters. They're all the same character model, just two of the hat, two of the bandana, and they're all pal swaps. Oh yeah, about that four-player thing. If you'd have done your research properly, you'd have found this flyer from Taito stating the specs on Growl. You can hook this game up to any four-player cabinet and enjoy four-player mode. You didn't necessarily need to hook up two cabinets like you claimed, nor would you have even needed to buy two boards. So why should anyone endorse the show of a guy who has no clue what he's talking about? There are evil poachers. 
well, obviously poachers are evil, and they are hunting animals to extinction. You, as part of the Ranger Corps, must defeat them and save the animals. Corpse? Corpse? Don't you know how to pronounce English, you Okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna enlist some help for this. I'm out of here. Warning, parts of the following RAR may contain Razor Fist. Throbbing, veiny, fully engorged Razor Fist. There are evil poachers. <laughs> well, obviously poachers are evil. And they are hunting animals to extinction. You, as part of the Ranger Corps, must defeat them and save the animals. Hey look, it's Macho Man. What? What? Hey, I'm into wrestling. You're into wrestling. Did that make any sense to you? What's the matter? You don't remember when Macho Man Randy Savage had a bleach blonde hairdo and an orange jumpsuit? Come on, man! Was that when he was feuding with Disco Inferno or something? Ooh, yeah! Then right after your long-distance phone call with PETA, your bar is blown up. Is it your bar? I think I'm looking way too deep into this. Shaboom! See people's body parts exploding everywhere? Now I'm waiting for a phone call from the Human Rights Watch group. But since Pamela Anderson is pissed, I mean, <clears throat> PETA is pissed, it's okay. Kill everyone that moves for the ethical treatment of animals. Don't get me wrong, I like animals, but this is kind of overboard. What? It's like he's just talking at us. What gives? What the fuck is the point of mentioning Pamela Anderson there? Allow me to advance the radical theory that that isn't even a joke. It's not even a bad joke. It's just a reference. It's the kind of fucking bullshit that people falsely accuse Dennis Miller of doing. Oh, did you realize that pancakes are made with Bisquick? It's not a fucking joke! <laughs> yeah, and the whole Pamela Anderson thing, uh, yeah, because she's a part of PETA, is that it? It's only funny if you make a reference to her boobs or something. At least try to make a bad joke. I can respect the effort, at least. That's all I'm saying. In this game, you'll be attacked by 10 to 15 enemies at a time. So yeah, it can become real chaotic real quick. Yeah, it's almost as if they're trying to get more quarters because that's the entire economic model of the arcade system, you drooling fucking simp! Also, when you kill your enemies, they don't disappear for a while like most games. So during your animal crusade, you'll be fighting on top of the corpses of your fallen enemies. My god! He used the word corpse in the correct context there! And pronounced it correctly! Three cheers for the irate gamer Zemo brother! Now every time you decide to save some animals, they help you kill people. Like this lion here. You save that white bird, now his friends are helping you maim everybody. Reminds me of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. In so much as there are in fact birds in the game, way to establish that sunshine. This is the end for you. Oh no, he got me! Yeah, that just happened. You just saw that footage without sound. Now before we inundate you with this guy's comedic genius, we're going to show you just how little effort this man expanded in the name of comedy. We came up with a couple of quick quips that we're going to throw at you and, well, here, let's just start. Tank you! In Soviet Russia, tank fills you! Easy, guys! It's a tank, not a Hispanic vagina. Is it too soon to make a Coney 2012 joke? Now, even if you didn't laugh at any of those jokes, we can at least all agree that they were jokes. Whether funny or unfunny, some effort was actually put into crafting them. Now, let's go ahead and show you what this little homunculus came up with. Drumroll, please! Drumroll! Did you ever wonder how many people you can fit inside of a tank? Let's find out. Three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. It's like a party tank. Way to go. You killed my partner with your crappy video. Which means I gotta do the rest of this review alone. Now this is one of those levels in the arcade where you just feed the machine quarters and quarters and quarters until you get through it. In the Sega ports of this game, it wasn't even included. It was replaced by a dark cave where you can't even see anything. You just kind of have a flashlight and you jump. You have a flashlight, therefore you can see. You're going to spend $2 alone just to get past this level. No, 
No, if you're halfway competent, you can pass the cave stage with only one quarter. Here's my friend Sky Blue Monty showing you just how he did it. Yeah, towards the end he just barely makes it, but he manages to do it with just one credit. 25 cents, not two dollars, and with more practice, he could even do it without getting hit at the end. Now here's you. Yeah, it takes two bucks if you let yourself get hit on purpose in order to act like you have something to complain about. We just debunked everything you've claimed about this game so far. Which is funny, because you said this too. The controls aren't that bad and they're pretty fluid, which is surprising. When I want to kick, punch, or blow up a poacher, I know that I'll be able to with ease. That's probably the only upside to growl. So in other words, there was no reason whatsoever for you to make this review! <laughs> Except for the PCB board money you were hoping to make, of course. Alright, well, before we go, here's a couple more points I wanted to make. The second boss we encounter is a Jason Voorhees ripoff. Borges? You mean Jorge Luis Borges? Or Jason Voorhees? Taito at this point seems to have thrown the originality card out the window. You have yet to say one original thing in your review, and the review idea itself is the most unoriginal thing you can do on the internet aside from vlogs. Glass House. Now we're on to the final boss. I like to call him the Ringmaster, but he's kind of a mix of Vega from Street Fighter, a well-dressed mime, and... Igor with rocket launchers. Translation, he couldn't come up with anything, so he just said a bunch of things. Sometimes this was in a local pizzeria. That shit's cold, your mom's nagging you, she won't shut up. Get off that damn game! Sorry, flashbacks. And then this bullshit happens. Disturbing. May I suggest therapy? And that's the plot twist of the century. Poachers were controlled by pre a butterfly, mucus-colored turd burglar, millipede body, quarter-stealing, time-wasting, penis creature from the planet Tido. Somebody call 911, because comedy was murdered. I'm not joking when I say we'll be spending 10 to 15 minutes trying to fight this Titoian alien. And I'm not joking when I say it took Sky Blue Monty only four minutes to kill him. And here he is again, folks. And guess what? Monty did it here with one life. It's all a matter of pattern recognition, that's all. There was really no need for an arcade version of the irate gamer. It's a shame that you could have endorsed arcade gaming as a medium lost to time, maybe shared its rich history and the culture that surrounded it. Instead, you went for the cheap and uninspired, standard, boring, forced, angry gamer bullshit. And that's a shame. I'm still trying to figure out if this guy's a well-fed jungle samurai sumo wrestler from... Ugh, never mind. I'm done trying to figure out this clusterfuck of a game. And I'm done with your review, Arcadic. Leave arcades to the people who know about them, okay? And don't quit your real job, whatever that might be. Till next time, dear viewer. And even the almighty Indiana Jones whip. Wait a minute. Did you just catch that? I'm pretty sure I just pulled it out of his ass. Yep, I pulled it out of his ass. Jesus.